Welcome to the Necklace 11 X12 technology. Today we're looking at the brand new Gigabyte GeForce GTX 650 OC 1GB GDDR5 graphics card from Nvidia. This is a new 28nm card that should perform pretty good for the price. This product was provided by Forticus. Thank you. Alright, here's the box. It isn't all that big as you can see. Again, this is the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 650 graphics card which uses the PCI Express 3.0 interface as you can see. To cool this card down, Gigabyte went with a 100mm large fan. On this side you obviously see we're looking at the 1GB version of this card. There also is a 2GB version out there. But on this side we get even more specifications. Again, 1GB of GDDR5 memory, a 128-bit bus width, the PCIe 3.0 interface is used, 100mm fan zinc, that's a little weird, then DirectX 11 of course is also supported and the HDMI port is gold plated. Now in the back of the box you get lots of details on the features and Gigabyte really advertises their gold plated HDMI port which should perform really good and also protects against EMI interference. The box as always is fairly standard for Gigabyte but I like the snake eye thing here on the box, looks pretty cool. Good, now let's open this box up, that's what you get inside. Here's the Gigabyte quick installation guide, the driver CD but I'd recommend downloading the latest drivers from Nvidia's website. Then here we have a dual Molex to PCI Express 6-pin adapter for older power supplies and that's all for the accessories. All that's left now inside is the graphics card and an anti-static bag. I'll quickly open that one up so we can take a close look at the card. There we go, it looks very standard but before I tell you more let's just remove the protection plastic pieces first. Good, now that everything is removed I have to say Gigabyte didn't change their design. I already reviewed a GT640 and it pretty much looks identical. But somehow this card makes a better impression to me. The design of course isn't the greatest but it's okay. Here's the 100mm fan to cool this card down, very nice transparent fan. Unfortunately the basic black plastic shroud is still used but oh well, this card is heavier. As you can see a fairly large aluminum heatsink is used so I don't think this card will be running hot at all since the new 28nm process is used. To power this card up you will require a PCI Express 6-pin power connector. Now on the back as you can see a blue PCB is used and it's not empty, I like that. And something that really makes this card interesting is the length. Look how short it is, this will pretty much fit in any case. Like already mentioned before the PCI Express 3.0 interface is used, but you could of course also install this in an older PCIe 2.0 slot with minimal performance differences. This is a dual slot card by the way and as for the outputs you get one black DVI port on the top and another one on the bottom. Here's the gold plated HDMI port and the standard VGA port. Up here are some ventilation holes. Alright, the outputs are really really good and there's nothing to complain here. The overall design and look of the card is not the best for my taste. Gigabyte could have designed it a little better to make it more attractive, but this card looks a lot better than the GT640 that I've tested, although these cards look identical in some way. But Gigabyte did a great great job on the cover here for the DVI ports. As you can see that's a nice metal cover here and I really liked it, it looks amazing. But now let's move on to the specifications. The Gigabyte GeForce GTX 650OC has 1GB of GDDR5 memory and uses the GK107 GPU. It has a core clock of 1111MHz, a memory clock of 1250MHz and a shader clock of 1111MHz. The TDP of 65 watts is very low due to the new 28 nanometer architecture. DirectX 11.1 is fully supported and the bus width would be 128-bit. In GPU-Z the card gets detected without any problems and there are a lot of transistors packed in there. At the time of this video I have the latest graphics driver installed. And since this is an OC card it is overclocked of course. I'm not sure how the temperatures would look like but if they stay low I'm sure you could still squeeze out a little more performance by overclocking this GPU even further. But enough of this, let's move on to the benchmarks. This is my test system. As always I'll start with 3D Mark Vantage at the performance preset. And here the GPU score is 11722 which I have to say is quite a good score. Right off the bat I can guarantee you, you can play every game out there at the time of this video. Of course not in maxed out settings, but yeah, medium to high settings should be good with this card. Honestly I didn't expect such a high score for a GPU at this price point. Also in the 3D Mark 11 at the performance preset I get a good tool score of P3170, so again I was surprised. This really proves that gaming definitely is possible with this card. This is a DX11 benchmark so that's pretty heavy, but still I got great results, nothing to complain. Now in Cinebench release 11.5 in the OpenGL test this GTX 650 got an average frame rate of 53.05 FPS. For the price that's a very good result and I can't complain at all. 
But now I'll start with something really demanding and that would be the Unigine Heaven Benchmark 3.0. Let's see how well this card does here. Since this card completely supports DirectX 11, I'll run it at that API here. The tessellation is set to normal, shaders on low, AF to 2x, 2 times AA, and I'll be running this at full screen 1680 by 1050 So these are some mid-range settings, not too high, but also not too low. Guess what, even at these settings, this card is not to stop when comparing with the price. On average, I get 33 FPS, on minimum 13.1, and 68.6 FPS at max. The score would be 830, which is really good actually for this benchmark. Remember, I used fairly high mid-range settings. But if that doesn't tell you anything, then it's time to run the Last Planet 2 benchmark at 1680 by 1050 The MSAA is set to 4 times, Motion Blur is also on, and the rest of the settings are also maxed out, including the DirectX 11 features. In Test A, the card runs at 43 FPS on average, which is fairly good. It ranked B. But you have to keep in mind this is a NVIDIA game. It's designed to run well with NVIDIA graphics cards, but still, that's good performance. Test B, as always, is a little more demanding and that's noticeable with 36.3 FPS on average. But even this frame rate can be considered as very good because don't forget, I'm running this on maxed out settings. It ranked B here as well. The next benchmarking tool I'm going to run through is Furmark at 680 by 1050 without AA. Here the GTX 650 scored 868 points and that's good. This is a heavy benchmarking tool as well. The test took 60 seconds and my average frame rate goes from 14 to 15 FPS. Not bad actually. But enough for the synthetic tests, let's move on to the game benchmarks. Here in Dirt Showdown on ultra settings with 8x MSAA, so basically maxed out settings, I get 18 FPS on minimum and 24 FPS on average. Now this is not playable, but since this was running on maxed out settings, it has to be worse somewhere. Because what can we expect from a graphics card at this price point? If it could run these modern game titles on ultra, what's the point of the more expensive cards then? I was running this at 680 by 1050 by the way. Now when I lower the settings to high instead of ultra and maybe even turn down the MSAA to 2 times instead of 8, we get to see a lot better results, playable ones. On minimum I get 47 FPS while on average I get great 58 FPS. So you will agree with me, this is definitely playable. So for the price, good gaming performance is offered, that's for sure. Now in Battlefield 3 at 680 by 1050 on ultra settings with the MSAE turned off and the AF load to 1x, I get pretty good results too. 31 FPS on minimum, 42 FPS on average and 57 FPS at max. So in my ass that's not playable, but lots of people consider 30 FPS as playable, but I'm getting 42 FPS here. So for those people that can play games with these frame rates, well this card is a bang for the buck. When I tried lowering the settings to high instead of ultra, I surprisingly get the same result as if I'd still be playing on ultra settings. Of course there's a tiny tiny difference, but that doesn't count. I seriously don't know why this is happening. I reviewed the GT640 from Gigabyte 2 and the same thing was happening in this game. Well, my guess would be the driver. Maybe Nvidia will fix this issue someday. And now to the temperatures. On idle, this card is running at 25 degrees Celsius, which are 77 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very low. Now when I put this card on full load, the temperature goes all the way up to 52 degrees Celsius, which are 126 degrees Fahrenheit. But believe me, this is low as well. The ambient room temperature was at 21 degrees Celsius, which are 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So overall the idle and low temperatures are very very low and like I've already said in the beginning of this video, it looks like you could overclock this card a little further to squeeze out a little more performance. So it will do even better in these tests and games. The fan is also very silent. Alright, but now to the final test, the power consumption. On idle, the GPU with the i5-3570K consumes 78 to 79 watts, which I have to admit is very low. And on low, the GPU with the i5-3570K consumed 154 to 155 watts. Believe me, this also isn't high at all. So Nvidia did a great job, I'm not disappointed. I can't complain here. The Gigabyte GeForce GTX 650 OC 1GB GDDR5 graphics card is a great choice for gamers that are on a tight budget. You saw yourself, gaming works out very very well and this card can run some games on maxed out settings as well. You know, for the price you normally wouldn't expect such performance like this card delivers. The temperatures are also very low, the fan is very silent and if you'd like to squeeze out more performance, then overclock it a little further. The power consumption isn't high at all and this is something I really look for when benchmarking graphics cards. As you saw the card itself is very short and therefore it will pretty much fit in any case. Pros are, great price performance ratio, it plays games fine on medium to high settings, 
then it has a low power consumption, as well as low temperatures, and is very silent at the same time. For the cons I can only say Gigabyte didn't use the best design when it comes down to the looks, but because that doesn't really matter much and because there are so many pros, I can only give this graphics card a 10 out of 10 and would definitely recommend it. Again thanks to Forticus for providing this product. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.